this real is- quick. I've got an email here from uh, Jeremy. He says, Mark, I've got a question. Is it against the principles of liberty for somebody to receive a government disability check? And, um, you know, we could ask this in one form or another on a pretty regular basis. Is it against the, you know, are, are you a bad libertarian if you work for the government or whatever? And I got to say no. Um, you know, the, as far as I'm concerned, the government is an organization that uses uh, force and threats of force to garner money from people. It's stealing. If a thief, a robber, steals money and then goes out to, uh, to the middle of town and then hands out $10 bills – I don't think you're wrong for going and getting one of those $10 bills or two or three. I don't care how many mm-hmm. you get. doesn't matter to me. Um, so I don't think that that's the case. I have concerns which have to do with um, you know the, uh, the, the restrictions the government may put upon you for the receipt of their checks. But if those chains less, rest lightly upon you, then I don't see there's any point. There's any problem with it. Yeah, you know, you're recovering some of your money back in that particular case. So I, I can understand that, like, for me, I would try not to. Like, I'm not interested in taking their money. I don't want to, but I understand that if you're if you're in a, a tough situation, if you've got physical maladies, and the government essentially has, to some extent, not really fully, but, you know, they would like to monopolize the charitable marketplace. If it's difficult for you to find help through other means, then... I don't see anything wrong with it inherently because the gov- since the government is out there siphoning off what would otherwise be much more productive charitable dollars. Because remember, whenever the government spends money, it does it poorly, inefficiently. It is it fails mostly at it. Uh, but you know, eventually, it will get money to people that are actually in need and can legit can j- legitimately say, yes, this is this is helping me. Uh, but uh, but the local charity uh, in your town or multiple charities, they do a much better job of helping people that are in need because they're accountable. You know, if they if they do the right thing, then they get rewarded. If they do the wrong thing, then people can punish them by not giving them money next time around. And so they're much more efficient uh, and judicious with their use of their dollars. And, and it's, so I don't think it takes any uh, – um, when you consider that 70 cents on every welfare dollar goes to middle class bureaucrats and the government apparatus for which they work – and compare that to uh, the organizations that do charitable work. I, you know, I, mean, I don't think anybody's going to make the argument that the, the government is more efficient. The government right. has one advantage. They can force people to give. But in that advantage, they create for themselves a disadvantage, which is that they don't have the ability to react to the marketplace. They don't know what people want, and then they end up creating all kinds of problems in the process. Right, and one of those problems is the fact that they're displacing those dollars. Those dollars that they're taking by force could otherwise have been given to a a private charity, a local charity, maybe run by a concerned community group or by a church or whomever. Those dollars would have otherwise gone to them, and so therefore that su- kind of sucks off the uh, the, the marketplace, uh, you know, the, the supply. If you will, it just creates inef- inefficiencies in the marketplace. The more inefficiencies that are in a given uh, system, the more likely it will collapse. My point being, uh, because that money is going to the government, those other organizations aren't getting that money. Therefore, there are fewer organizations out there because there are fewer dollars for them all to chase after. So there aren't as many in the market in the beginning. And secondly, the ones that are in the market don't have as as good of funding as they could otherwise have. Right. So if so, that can lead some people to this this position of well, we need the government because these other organizations aren't doing people what is necessary. aren't giving enough, but. If you didn't have the government in place, you would be able to do away with a a great deal of the fraud Um, when you consider that the insurance industry claims that 25 percent of claims are fraudulent. I can only imagine that uh, the government, which doesn't have uh, nearly the uh, the the wherewithal and the interest in checking on people and their uh, the 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 validity of their claims, likely has a higher level of fraud. I'm not going to say there aren't people that need help. I think that there's probably I'm just going to guess 50 50 since the the insurance companies have 25 i'm just going to say 50 50 i have no idea nobody knows if you don't like my number 
come up with your own number. Um, I, I say it's 50-50. But at the same time, these other agencies are significantly more efficient. So the government uh, will then... The charities be, are more you, efficient. The, the charities are more efficient. So then you get rid of the inefficiencies of uh, you know people being... Uh, you, you know, using fraud and the um, inefficiencies of the government not having to care whether or not they uh, use the money wisely. The government isn't on the list of charities that use money the the you know least wisely. When you look at you know, lots of people make a big deal about how much the CEO of say Red Cross or United Way mm-hmm. or whatever make versus say the Salvation Army or whomever. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just uh, coming up with some numbers that I've seen in the past, but nobody ever puts the government on that list. And all their middle class bureaucrats that are raking in all kinds of great pensions and other perks and bennies. Yeah, it's all true. So, so okay, yeah. So you take the government's disability, or you take the government's uh, what is it, the unemployment check, or you know whatever it is that they're offering to you, take it. I would say still use caution because remember you are dealing with a criminal gang. And there may be strings attached to that money that perhaps you won't realize in right. advance. If you act, if you take some money from the Red Cross or the Salvation Army or whomever, they're likely never to come back after you. But if the government decides for whatever reason you're committing fraud and they just seem to pick people when they go after folks. I mean, take mm-hmm. a look at this website we were discussing in the earlier part of the show. They went after one of just a myriad of websites where you can upload stuff. That's right. And they went after them. Now, I don't know if there's more to the story or not. Didn't hear that part. Uh, maybe we'll find out later. But it, it, it so many times it's looked like the government has just turned its eye upon somebody and gone after them. I don't know. Right. And so the more you interact with them, maybe the more likely something like that will happen. Alternatively, there's always the chance that, you know, maybe you start taking this disability payment and it's helping you and you're getting medicine and and all that. But down the line, the federal government changes the rules or they change the rules to make it so you can't get it anymore. Or perhaps they just end the program, which we all know government programs don't generally end, but they can change the rules at will. Sure. And there's no liability they have. If they decide that all of a sudden they're going to cut you out of their program, you can't sue them for it. You have They have no obligation to provide you with the service in the first place, even if they've been providing it to you in the past. Now, I so, have a fr- I had you know, a friend be ready of, for that. I had a friend of mine who was on disability. He was on for several years, many years, for depression. And he got a check enough that he didn't have to work. And then he decided, you know what? I'm going to get a job. I want to not live like this anymore. So he forwent the basically, you know, unenrolled or did whatever one has to do in order to get a job, went and got a job and said, this working thing stinks. I think I'm depressed and (laughs) wanted to get back on government uh, disability. Yeah. And he couldn't do it. He just couldn't get back on. Really? Now, I'm not saying that they're wrong for not having put him back on. I'm not saying they're right for having put him on in the first place. But he had an expectation. He had an expectation he was going to be able to get on, and he couldn't do it. So they thought he was dis- uh, they thought he was depressed until he said, you know what, I'm going to try not to be depressed anymore. At which point they you know, ceased to believe that he was depressed. But then when he said he's depressed again, they're like, oh, no, you were de- not depressed there for one day. And so you can't be depressed anymore. I, you know, I mean, it's a it's it's a weird thing. Obviously, mental mental health issues are kind of clunky and you never know exactly how things are for people. I, you know, if I was willing to give somebody money for depression at one point, would I not be willing to give it to them in the future? I think don't think it. You know, I mean, I think that he needs some kind of help beyond this. And I, maybe it's the best thing in the world for him that he didn't get the money. But I'm just saying, you know, the government's really arbitrary, folks. Yeah. So be careful. I mean, you're dealing with a criminal gang here, and I don't care if we're talking about disability or Social Security or the Veterans Administration, you know, military benefits as well. They can all be pulled out from under you at any moment. So it can be very risky to become dependent on these things, which, of course, is a position in which the government would like to place you, to be dependent upon them. Because if you're dependent upon the government, then you're more likely to advocate they stick around. You're more likely to want them to... Uh, to stay in the future. 855-450-FREE. That's the SACL CAI toll free line. All that aside, I can't blame anyone for going ahead and, and doing that deed, especially if you've paid into the system. Why not? More coming up. Hour 3 is next. Free Talk Live. 